Yo, what's up? This is Grip, and y'all gonna have to check me out on the next episode of I Only Touch Greatness with my boy Ryan and my boy Royal, because that shit's gonna be lit. Tap in. Yo, check this out. Getting wrecked for 1993. The newest member of the syndicate, a 14-year-old female. Yeah, that's what I said, a female. She's about to get cold buck wild and show all you weak-ass suckers how to do it. Her name is Grip. I ain't finna say no more. Yo, Grip, tell them what time it is. Well, I'm the funky, funky Grip, and I'ma tell you how it is. I'm just a 14 year homie. I'm working so big as a young-ass kid. I was always tripping, and I got like Lenin, and I'm dramatically different. I was different from the rest because I sought to learn my heritage. And I yours in my life made a turn, I turn for the better, not a turn for the worse. I'll try to watch my back, but I can't to leave. I'm curse. This is Cali, what I look like, giving a warning. Land of milk and honey, season bees be swarming. Get the fuck out. Your umbrella's at the door. Get the fuck out. It ain't sunny anymore. Back the fuck up. You get fucked up. Back the fuck up. Shit is fucked up. Get the fuck on. Get your swerve on. Get the fuck on. This ain't a chill zone. Kick back. You see the ass is kind of fat. Big back. My rounds, they don't know how to act. Make these niggas break their neck. They gon' break their whole check. And when he hitting it from the back, he gon' bang his fucking set. I'm from a place you can't post your location. Cause niggas tuned in like a radio station. Before you pull up to your crib, they be laying and waiting. Yeah, it's hotter than the bitch, but I'm bullets be raining. Oh, Kelly with the bullshit. What is you saying? You ain't never heard of Oakland. You niggas is playing. Go ahead, book a flight back. Don't forget your backpack. Sack will send you home before you get a chance to unpack. You thinking Hollywood? Then you lacking. Can't pull up in the blood and crip hoods. Gotta tap in. Yeah, we make movies, but the essays ain't acting. We don't ride slow. We roll in sport with no track. With no track. Another concrete jungle with the animals. And even niggas born here get eaten by a cannibal. Don't come to Oakland with that shit. Them niggas is hitters. Don't come to Sack with that shit. Them niggas be drunk. Don't come to Inglewood with that shit. Them niggas is bracking. Don't come to Long Beach with that shit. Them niggas is cracking. Don't come to Compton with that shit. Cause they ain't never lacking. Don't come to Watts with that shit. Them niggas ain't niggas ain't Utah with that shit. Back the fuck up. Shit is fucked up. Back the fuck up. Cook it fuck. You're tuning into I Only Touch Greatness Podcast. Vancouver's best show with Ryan Hayes. Often imitated but never duplicated. I Only Touch Greatness Podcast with Ryan Hayes. So bored and open. So born in Oakland, what was childhood like for you growing up? Oh, um, <laughs> I get that question a lot. Man, it was, um, it, it, it was a uh, good and bad. I, I had, so, so I had a really, I have a, like a really good mom. I'm her only child. So, um, and I, she was a hard work in mother and, um, she, uh, basically like put a lot of her energy and time into me, you know, her focus being that I was her only child. Um, and then like, um, on my dad's side, he was, he was a good, he, he, he passed away. He was a good person at heart, but he had, um, some, a lot of challenges like, uh, you know, with, uh, stability and, and drug issues and stuff like that. So, um, when I would go back and forth, it would be like really, really stable. And then, um, as stable as my dad could make it, which, um, Oakland in the eighties, uh, wasn't so stable. Cause that was like the era, the crack era. So I kind of came up in like, um, like the heart of the crack era. You know what I mean? So it was like, that's when the shootings were picking up. Um, you know, you would you would be driving down the street and you'd see family members um, high. And it's like, oh, there's such and such. I don't want to yeah. name them, but, you know, yeah. it, would, it, just, it would just be, it was hard to understand what was going on with them. You know, then my dad would, would be there one day and then he would disappear uh, for, for weeks at a time. 
and like uh, leave us with, with my stepmom and we would go out looking for him at night. Just crazy shit, you know, like I just, it's it's crazy because when people ask me, it's like I'm bringing it up. It's almost therapy to think about it because I've buried it. And I, I do bring it out when I rap, but besides that, I don't really bring it out and I try not to think about it. You know? Yeah, we're, we're, def we're definitely not trying to Vlad you here with the questions. And, uh, <laughs> no! Not at all. And and no. sometimes it's sometimes it's good to be able to speak to somebody about something, right? It, it, it is, it is, it is. But yeah, yeah. So I mean, I can't. I think we tend to glorize glorize uh, negativity in hip hop. I'm even guilty of it. But when you really think about it, I can't lie and say, "Oh, growing up in Oakland was lit." You know, I liked. I like, you know, uh, getting shot at and people getting, right. seeing my relatives get smoked and people on crap, like, you know what I mean? Right, it wasn't, right. basically, yeah, basically trying to sell them a dream that it wasn't really a true dream, you know what I mean? So how'd you, yeah. come, up, how'd you come up with the name Grip? So, um, so I came up with the name Grip in, in junior high. My friends kind of named me that shit. They thought it sounded hard. We had started like a... Um, like a fake ass gang and shit. Um, and uh, I was the head of the gang and they were like, um, they named me. They're like, yeah, we're going to, we, we want to call you something hard. And they literally just thought of, it, and they were like, we're going to call you grip. And I was like, yeah, that sounds hard. You know? Cause I thought I was hard at the time. and was, um, was the leader of the, the whole thing. And um, they just kind of came up with it. I don't know how the stud got put on it to be honest, but um, I think, I think at that time people were were putting like Twista and the stuff. It was like the stuff era, so it just kind of stuck. People don't put the stuff. Now we're in the little, the little, and the the little this and the little that and the yeah. Everybody's you got know, a little. Like, yes, yeah, a bunch of little, little yachty, little little. You know, little Uzi so bird, I, like little yeah, <laughs> yeah, little, yeah, little, yeah, uh, yeah, little yeah. pistol starter. <laughs> you know, what yeah, I mean? <laughs> exactly. yeah, exactly. It's, I, I, like, well, I think it's okay cool. if you're like uh, the son of somebody, like a little easy, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Hey, uh, <laughs> yeah. A little Nate dog or something like that. Right. No, I'll go shoot ahead, one bro. more, Prince, and go then you go. Sure. Okay. Um. When did you first become interested in music and wanting to take it seriously? Um, so I've always been interested in music. Um, again, I, I, I was, I grew up in like a rich era of music, you know, Luther Vandross, Whitney Houston, um, uh, Madonna, George Michael, Janet Jackson. Those are the people that I listen to um as a kid and then i remember like the induction of like two life crew and ice t and ice cube and dj quick and so that was that even when i wasn't supposed to be listening to some of the lyrics of that stuff it i just forced that in my life so i always um love music like i said it started out more with like um r b well really it really started with the beastie boys I'm about right there. And then run DMC. Mm. Those were like when I, those were like my first hip hop that I really listened to. And I was like, wow, I really like this shit, you know? And um, it just developed from there. When, when my mother moved us to LA to kind of get away from the, the fucked up shit in Oakland, my mom became a comedian and she came up with um, uh, Jamie Foxx, uh, Sherry Shepard, uh, Joe Tory would be at the house. Uh, Phase on Love to this day is uh -huh. still like my godfather. Uh -huh. um, yeah, she came up with like uh, all of those. Uh, J. Anthony Brown, Chris Spencer uh, used to pick me up and, and take me to the mall. Like, so we, I was always around entertainers, you know? And right. um, one day I just said I was watching um, Yo MTV Raps or something, and I was like, I, I want to try this, and I just tried it. And my mom was like, I got some comedian buddies that could throw you on stage before they go up to do their act in Hollywood. So that's even even underage. I just went up there and started um, opening shows in rapping, wow. and it, uh, it it went from there. No Holy. shit. And coming from that, like for real, like like. 
Because you got <laughs> that's a dope story. Like Jamie Foxx to Phase On, shout out to Phase On too. He showed love yeah. to um, uh, 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 sure. a reel that I did um, with, um, and it's crazy, right? How how that reel came about, right? Because I used to love the uh, movie Fear of the Black Cat. He oh, was in okay. It. So, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Shout yeah. out to the DJ who was the, uh, I forgot what his name was. He actually liked it too. And he um, added me on IG. And I was just like, yo, and he just showed love. I was like, yo, that's crazy. So what was one of your uh, favorite moments at that time period whenever your mom, you know, was a comedian? Do you got any uh, like story about that? Um, uh, let me see. My favorite moments. Well, my mom had did like a sitcom um, for like cable TV uh, mm. back then, and um, she she wrote it and directed it, and like all the comedians came out, and I just I remember um, a lot of the big stars that we have now like uh, came out and and did comedy for, her. and I just remember being underage, but just being enthralled with being able to be in this uh, nightclub with um, all these comedians cursing and talking shit and talking about sex. And I didn't know really what they were talking about, but you know, and, and, it, and it, I don't know, I shouldn't be saying it, but you know, just the whole club scene at like, like nine, you know, and, right, and right. now I look and all these people are like on TV and shit. And it's like, it's just, it's like crazy because you know, I got to see people start out with a dream and make it. And so that like helped inspire me also. You right. Know? I was about to say, man, like that had to be inspiring. And talking about your own TV reps and um happy birthday to uh Fat Five Freddy. You know, saying, his birthday is today and it was crazy because I didn't yeah, yeah, it's his birthday today. And Word. I'm glad that you're talking about it because I was watching all the Yo and TV raps uh, interviews, right? And I was like, I like one always particularly one it will always be the one with the nwa one you know what i'm saying like it always inspired oh. me you know what i'm saying because i remember how that was whenever they was on the truck and stuff you know what i mean like uh yeah. what was one of your um your tv raps you know moments that inspired you to be like you know what i really or is tuned in to the culture Dang, you know, that's a hard question because it was so long ago. It's kind of hard for me to remember. Um, yeah. To this day, I actually have in my uh, in my other room VHS cassettes because remember, you used to be able to tape the shows, mm -hmm. you know, that would come on. So right. I, I would just I would tape them and and watch them later and stuff. And it would be interesting because I need to kind of look over them and see what exactly I was taping because I can't really remember. I just remember looking um, at the the show and just like loving the life and way and the way people were able to express themselves. Um, back back then, rap was more diverse. Um, it, everything wasn't like so much about the same topics to me like it is now. So like seeing like um, the the different um, the hip hop styles and the clothing and how you didn't necessarily have to fit in. You could just be right. however right. and express yourself. And it was like so freeing to be able to see that shit. Now I think it's more like you got to conform. Right. Excuse me. Back then <clears throat> you could, if, if you were like crisscross and you um, put your pants to the back, that was cool. It was like, Wow, they're bold. They turn their pants around, or, or LL Cool J, I think, used to roll up a pants leg. Yeah. Yep, yep. Remember that was the cool that thing. Shit? Yeah, you remember, remember, he always had the pant leg up, right? He always ah! had it. He I had it for a minute. That. And that was like early in the 90s, right? He had Hell that one man. pant leg up, and he had that motherfucker going until at least, well, shit, at least probably like, like the, the album 10, the album 10, whatever he had, the album 10, that's, I think he, he stopped like with the pant leg down. He had, <laughs> had it okay. till like rocking, the FUBU I, days. I've been rocking, I, I was rocking hammer pants in 92. Exactly. This, yeah. I had the hammer doll. Fucking be different. You, that was the cool shit. Like flavor yeah. flavor with that big ass, what clock. was it, a clock? Yeah, the clock. Um, 
<laughs> Medallion. Uh, yeah. I think I think LL Cool J is one of like the people who really inspired me. Just when he came out with uh, I'm bad and the booming system and I need mm. love and then around the way girl. Yes. That shit just I'm like I fucking love rap. Right. I love it. And then I he came I- out with Out of Sync too. You remember Out of Sync the movie? <laughs> like oh, niggas forget shit. about the movie. They forget yes. about. See, I always tell people like this is when you know you true a part of hip hop because you gotta remember out of sync. You know what I'm saying? You gotta remember out of sync. You know, you gotta remember rapping from Ice T. So you know what I'm saying? You gotta remember these shits. You know what I mean? A lot of people be getting fucked up when they be like, yo, I don't fucking remember that shit. I'm like, uh, you supposed to know this shit. This is hip hop. You know what I mean? They don't know. They really don't be knowing. They no, don't they don't. know. And, and, and this is the thing, like just talking about, you know, the, early younger years man and and now talking about like m- music in general right think of um, one of the, your favorite music videos i always tell people one of my mu- favorite music videos would have to be either i'm bad and gangsta's oh, paradise yes. which one i'm bad or what and gangsta's paradise rp coolio uh, you know says that was big bro R.P. Coolio, yeah. you know, I'm, you know. I see what you did there. I see what you yeah, did there. Yeah, I see how I did it. But no, because really, that's one of my shit because, and I was just like, yo, this is fucking crazy. I didn't know you was in the movie. Like, yeah. I was like, yo. And then and then I seen that picture. I was like, yo, she looked familiar. Because I remember wow. you was one of my favorite characters a little bit. Oh, that's so... <laughs> That's cute. Man, them motherfuckers cut all my lines out, man. When I went to the theater, I was so disappointed. You know, movies, they, man, they'll have you film, you know, you film for three months and you have all these lines and then you go and your ass is cut the fuck out. You know, but I'm glad they left me um, in there rapping, at least in the beginning. But, um, yeah. But I was about now, to say about the rap scene, like, I still remember that rap scene, right? Like, I wasn't, you know, and, and coming from that era, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, it was like a lot of things was going on. Like, crack was really getting hard now, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And out of control. And then you had a lot of people who had, like, mental problems. They had people, like, who was just more rebellious, you know what I'm saying? Especially coming out of Cali, because Cali was like, yo, you know, we in the time right now that we don't know what's going to go on. Bill Clinton is in office, but yeah, he ain't doing that much. Like, you know what I'm saying? Word. Like, so, Word. so you had to express yourself. Like, how was it just to be a part of that movie and be with Michelle Pfeiffer and being in that iconic movie? Like, for real. That was, now that was lit. That was, that was some lit shit in my life, man. That was so freaking fun, man. Like, um, I, I, I just, so at the time I wasn't even aware how big of a star Michelle Pfeiffer really is, you know, I right. kind of knew who she was, but, um, I wasn't that aware because honestly in the movie, there was only two actual kids in the whole classroom. It was me yeah. and another person that were the only people that were actually real life kids. Yeah. Um, so at that time I wasn't as, um, I didn't know, uh, you know, wasn't as worldly as fa- as far as her, um, who she was and stuff. But I knew that she was a, a great actress. And also Andy Garcia was in the movie, too, which people don't know. They cut him completely out. Damn. He actually played her boyfriend. He he, he, he grabbed like a million dollars off of it. So I guess he he's like, well, fuck it. But um, he was fully in the storyline as her boyfriend. And so in the mornings, we would come um, at, for breakfast. You know, we'd have a call time at like five in the morning, some shit. And we would all, me, her, and the kids, and Andy Garcia would like sit around and have breakfast together and talk. And um, looking back on it, I'm like, wow, that shit is crazy. Like, you know, having breakfast for two, two or three months with Michelle Pfeiffer and Andy Garcia um, at the crack of dawn is fucking crazy. And they were the most humble, down to earth people. They treated all of us. They didn't act like they were above us or anything. Like there, there was times when like the director um, would kind of 
I believe it was assistant director, like kind of would talk to us not so nice and stuff. And I remember her like standing up, like, don't you fucking talk to these kids like that. Mm. And it was like quiet. And she was like, don't you, don't you fucking do it. Don't you do it. And then she would like have the, um, she would uh, walk around, let the kids, uh, hold her up like around their shoulders like she wow. was like yeah she was fucking cool as shit yeah wow. like you know you carry someone on your shoulders <laughs> right like that like she's a down ass white girl like she's with all the bullshit she no shit there. yo that's dope <laughs> like coming from seeing her like you gotta remember like all the shit she's been in she's been in what Star like face. Grease 2, you know what I'm saying? Scarface. Like, she's been in a lot of fucking movies, you know what I mean? Like, and, and I was coming. That you probably didn't get a chance to see Scarface. You were back then. I haven't you, seen you, it. You, yeah, you were probably still pretty young back then. And, yeah, and, I hadn't really seen it, but now when I watch it, I'm like, damn, that's my girl. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, but just the movie on my end was, was interesting because, um, it, it, it was times where they would want you to be more like quote unquote act more quote unquote black. So that was like some stereotypical shit. They'd yeah, be like, bullshit. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, they'd be like, walk down the hall and bop harder. Here, get the beat, get the boom box, put it in your shoulder and go like this. Yeah. And I look over at my mom, like, Mom, do I really have to do this? Like we don't really <laughs> right. do we don't we act like this, but not this much. No. So I remember just learning Hollywood, you know, and they'd be like, take your hair out, make it poofy, you know, and I'm like, huh. Right. Yeah, you know? and, and that, shit that shit doesn't fly nowadays. No, I mean, no, nah, because nine times out of ten, you got to look at it like, like, even for instance, like colors, like niggas wasn't really doing all that shit in colors. Like, you know what I'm saying? You got to look at what was really going down in the hood. Like, you don't know what's going down in poverty in the hood because everybody had poverty. Everybody had troubles, not just the hood. It just be like, it'd be like middle class people who got like, um, you know, poverty and, and just got troubledness. You know what I'm saying? It's always some part. A size that have troubleness, you know what I mean? It's like what yeah. DJ Quick always says: every place can be just like Compton, you know what I mean? It can be right. a particular type of area, you know. A lot right. of people from Hollywood wouldn't understand that because <laughs> they're not through the shit that we've been through. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. Well, can for can sure. you tell me the story of how Ice T found you when you were like fourteen? Um. Yeah. So I went in. Like I said, I was I was starting to do a lot of shows, and I my mom was like, "Let's put you in a, a hip hop competition." And um, ASCAP Publishing had um, this this competition, and I uh, got got in it. And it, I think it was like three levels, and um, I think that that's how I met Coolio too, because he would come and support like the competition and like the young artists and stuff. He was always so cool, but um, yeah. basically Ice T. So they promised you if you make it to the finals, we're gonna have A and R, we're gonna have stars there. So that was the thing. So when I made it to the finals, and um, this OG from LA named Michael Concepcion, I guess he had been at the semifinals and saw me, and he 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 told Ice he called me over to the table where Ice was sitting. He had his locs on. He was real young, you know. Ice back then he's like this. And the guy's like, this, this is, this is my girl. This, this little girl's hard. I'll, she's gonna go up and rock the stage. I want you to check her ice. And ice was like, cool. And he's just, and I'm like, hi. So I go up there and rock the stage. And um, afterwards, he found me in the, um, in the, in like the building. And um, and he was like, come to my house tomorrow. Like I like you, come to my house, and uh, and I think he like basically like signed me the next day, gave me gave me and my mom some bread, like a fat fat check. We thought we was rich. We, uh, my mom turned in our VW bug. We had had a green bug at the time, and she went and gave that motherfucker a, a back or some shit, and we went and got a Jeep Cherokee. So we thought we were on. So that's the story. Right, what? I was about to say, man, uh, R.P. the Coolio, man, and uh, I was just watching the Hip Hop Treasures um, um, episode, and it really was sentimental to me because it was just like, yo, watching that, 
it was like one of the last episodes and it was crazy because of the story of it because you know we got to interview coolio man he was so cool and he was so dope and i remember one thing they did you know saying and shout out to mimi his wife one thing they did he posted me on his um tiktok and I was like, yo, yeah, yeah, because I said um, happy birthday to him because we talked about hand on my nutsack. Oh. And it was so crazy because Ice-T and Coolio had their own episode, right? So I'm like, yo, this is fucking epic. Is This is two people that actually saved my life in this music in general because I ain't really have, I mean, my dad was there, but he didn't really wanted to, he didn't really get to, you know, do what he wanted to do. So I always feel like, Music raised me, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I was so in love with music and our favorite, you know, my favorite, like my first CD I ever had was Gangster's Paradise. And my, my like the first like movie that I always remember watching is Colors. You know what I'm saying? I used to be so intrigued with Colors, you know what I mean? So yeah. it was just like, yeah, it coming from there. And then I looked at it. And I was like, wow, this is fucking crazy. And this was right after his birthday and right after his death. And it was and it's so crazy because I never I never got the chance to talk about this, right? Mm. Um, I talked after he passed, like I figured like nine times out of ten, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just like you trying to sell everything in, man. And I was just I went back to the video because I'm like, man, he just posted me on this video. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was like one of the last, like right after the billion dollars, um, the billion dollar, um, not billion dollars, but the billion views that he got for Gangsta's Paradise. Mm. And I was like, yo, this is crazy. And then I'm just like, and I'm like, I'm maybe like, maybe like the second video out of it, but I didn't care about that. I just went back to the video, right? And I look and I see a notification and guess who liked it? I'm like, yo, shit, it's L Cool J. I'm like, yo, this is fucking crazy. And now I remember watching the hip hop treasures, watching that. And then I hear, you know, Cypher Sounds and all of them was talking about it. He was like, yo, we just had him on the show before he passed. It was just like oh. crazy. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I take it sentimental because it's just like, wow. You know what I mean? Because that's how cool Coolio is. And I figure like how all, all of our favorite, you know what I'm saying, rappers is. You know what I'm saying? That came yeah. from humble beginnings. Yeah. And it, it was crazy. It's fucked me up because... When I think about that, that's what made me want to do interviews like this anyway. You know what I mean? To give roses and flowers too, because I was listening to one of my favorite Ice T albums, mm. and I was forgot that you was on Funky Grifter, and then you was rapping. I was like, "Yo, this is her," and this is one of my favorite album covers of Ice T. Oh yeah. Yeah. Home invasion, you know what I'm saying? Him oh. looking at the yeah. kid, you know, striking the kid down yeah. with the white girl getting, you know, it looked like she's about to get killed. Like, yeah. and it all comes to like, you know, the Planet X book, right? So how was it working on Funky Gripster? Was that one of your first songs on yeah. with with Ice T at that at that time? Yeah, so that was one of the like that was like one of the first songs I had ever written because again when I met Ice T I hadn't been rapping very long. This mm. happened really really fast in a matter of months. Like right when I started rapping, I got in the competition and then I met Ice T. So wow. that was like the song I think that I was rapping when I was in the competition and um that I ended up winning the competition. I think I got like second place in that competition out of all these these grown ass folks. And so that was the that was what I was going on stage rapping. And he was like, uh, I want to put that on my album, you know, come to the studio and do it. And then he he kind of messed, he kind of uh, wrote the hook or whatever. And I just kind of did like the verses that I had been rapping for the show. Uh, but it, it, it was um, it was challenging because, you know, being like a studio artist is different than just going on stage rapping raw you could kind of like make mistakes and it was just different but when i it was challenging having to go in there especially with him and and all of these professionals and just be thrown in the studio and they're like rap like get on the mic and rap and then they're like okay do it over okay 
more like this or like that or you know but i didn't have that much correction but i was very nervous for sure or, you know very yeah. much so but i ended up getting it and uh it, it was interesting i was about to say how was it like um you know like at that moment you you're in the studio with iced tea you know what i'm saying with all people you know what i'm saying like this is like I think, like the body count era, Ice T too. Like it was about to like about to bubble with people, like, shit like that. You know the Mister Hardcore Ice T, and you just I can hear like when like when you flowing like you had like a little bit of like inspiration by like Yo Yo because you kind of remind me of you know what I'm saying like Yo Yo like a babe Yo Yo you know what I mean a baby Yo Yo huh yeah, yeah. that's right I did I grew I did used to listen to Yo Yo I used to listen to uh. A lot of uh, crisscross, DOS effects, uh, mm. uh, naughty by nature. I think uh, yeah. I kind of to Tretch. right? Yep, shout out to Tretch. I kind of mixed a lot of that shit in there, and uh, I, I I hear like the yo yo. Well, I'm the funky funky grips up, you yep. know. Funky no, grips tell you what it is. I'm just a, yeah, yep. So uh, <laughs> that, that's it. I almost unconsciously. You know, was was rapping like that. I think that that's just kind of how you delivered your shit back then. But um, it was lit. Yeah, you but, recently returned to music. What were you up to while you stepped away? So, um, oh man, it, that was a, so. It, so I, I'm gonna be honest. So over the years, I've um, I had done. I still kind of like been making music, but not really like putting it out, you know, because what when you rap, like you never just really stop writing raps, you know, and I would do um, stuff here and there and people would ask me. Um, but I uh, I went to college and I became um, a special ed teacher. So I taught special ed kids for many, many years wow. um, and have, have I have two sons that are teenagers, so just kind of like living life like that, you know, doing a, a, some little acting stuff here and there, some commercials and stuff like that, and um, chilling. I think when the pandemic came, a lot it gave you me time to like tap back. I had more free time, so I was mm -hmm. able to tap back into like uh, I don't want to say what I really wanted to do, but like the way that I find more like freedom in myself, being for a sure. teacher for especially somebody like me being a teacher was very confining because um, you have to fit into this role and that's not really me. So even though I love the kids, it was kind of like I would be putting on an act like I was this square person, which um, I'm far from it. People would joke like, you know, when I would get off, they would be like, wow, okay, so are you coming back to your other side? Here she goes again. And I take, I would even wear prop glasses to work. So I could try to look more like square and shit because I've got I have all these tats and I wear long sleeves. And, so anyway, it, it, it was interesting, but I, I'm glad that I'm back rapping and shout out to Ice's daughter, Tisha, who I grew up with because she was really, um, the person that came to me and was like, bitch, you about to start rapping again. I'm going to creatively direct your shit and I'm going to be by your side and we're going to do this shit. And she was like, and it, it ain't no choice. You're going to do it. So get started. And this was just in February, this mm, past February, yeah. when I started star at the Walk of Fame. Uh, we, uh, we, had, we spent three weeks together. And then that time she just kind of like told me, do it. And that's how I got started back. So no what, shit. What are you working Yo, on? Yo, so, um, oh no, I was about to ask her too, because it, I, I seen that, and shout out to uh, Big Court, because I seen the picture of you at the whole court mm -hmm. thing. Was you yeah. there whenever he, he was doing the interview with um, Ice? What, was I there when he did the interview with Ice? Yeah, with I see because I see I seen, well, I just seen you with, was with um, Big Court, yeah. man. How, how dope was it, you know, being. Be part of that, and I seen because I seen his um live on um on the uh, walk because he was over there at the uh, walk of fame too, like uh, ceremony. Right. So how was it? Yeah. How was it? You know, being a part of that, and and how is it? You know, what I'm saying meeting up with um Big Court. Man, that shit was lit. So I wasn't there when Ice had did his episode, but he okay. is like um he's an honorary syndicate member. You know, we love Big Court. He's really like a close friend of like um, our family, sort of speak. Cause at this point, like we're kind of, you know, 
it's been 30 years damn near so we're like family you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like us us especially the original syndicate members you know uh, where they're like all my uncles and whatever anyway right so Kurt, it's like inducted into that and um we love him and uh tisha tisha uh big t ice's daughter was just like um I'm, i want you to go on there and uh, she called him. He was like, sure, you know, come down or whatever. And Ice, you know, vouched for me, you know, was like, yeah, put her on or whatever. <laughs> and uh, it was lit. It was so much fun. I mean, we touched on the interview. We talked about like women's issues and all type of shit, not even just music. So um, it was it was lit. It was right. Lit. I was about to say, man, like, but you was at the, uh, the Walk of Fame yeah. ceremony. So oh. how, how dope was that? How how dope this being a part of something like this? This is crazy because um, shout out to you know um, uh, so many people that we did interviews with Tupac right, and he gets his walk walk of fame the same year as Ice T, and that was so dope. Like, how is it you know being a part of that? Like, you know, part of that history, that epic yeah. moment. Yeah, uh, you know, it's funny in life because. I don't know if this happens to other people. When you're living in a moment, you don't really know how big it is till after it passes and then you step away and look at it. Yeah. Um, and this this is like the story of my life. Like I'm like all everything I've done, I guess I'm just uh I just I'm always I don't know, I'm not able to 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 understand like how big it really is when I'm doing it till like after I do it. So, right. you know, I, uh, the Walk of Fame, we were very happy and excited, but it was like, for us, especially like as women, it was like, we were concentrating for days, like, what are we going to wear? We, uh, Ice is like, get there on time. And it, it, so it it's a right. lot that goes into it. You know what right. I'm saying? And, um, but it was, it was crazy dope because I, like I came in and I had like a chair for me with my name on it in the front. And I'm like, Oh, I feel so special. It was like, like me and e, his DJ evil E sat next to each other. And I'm like, okay, yeah, they took the time to, to do that. And, uh, and then all these people came out to support ice, um, cube, you Chuck watched D. it. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah, yeah. Yeah, Chuck D. It was it was a whole bunch of um um the lady from um uh, um from uh, Law and Order. Oh man, it was so many. People. I was like, oh my god, it was, it was so lit. It was lit. It was lit. It was so lit. But you know, um, so it was great. But I think growing up in the industry, like I've always been around around them. Yeah, so many great celebrities and people. You know, I I, I so I'm you're used to it, right? Yeah, I'm just kind of used to it. You know, I've talked to Tupac. I've met Aaliyah. Like, I've met Easy e I, Like, I've conversated with these people. So, for my life, it's like, I just, I'm trying to top different moments. You know what right. I'm saying? I was about to say, that, man, you, you just need sparked it on it. Hey, you sparked it on the brain. How, uh, how was it just talking to Tupac and Aaliyah? Like? Aaliyah just had, like, a passing not too long ago. Like, how how dope was that? How yeah, dope was that just to talk to a humble girl, like, baby girl? You know what I'm saying? That was one of my first crush, crushes. Like, when I used to watch the uh, uh, At Your Best, let me know with that shit. Like, I used to be like, oh, yeah, I can't wait. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. how dope was it? How dope was it? It was so crush. dope because, you know, she... What you saw on TV is really how she was. She was quiet. She was extremely mature for her age. You know, this when I we had did I met her because we were doing a radio show together um, in L.A. And the, the topic of the show was kids with grown up lyrics. So it was it was. Um, uh, do you remember the group Immature? The, mm -hmm. the oh, hell yeah. Hell okay. yeah. Yeah, so it was Immature Aaliyah, and then me, and then one other uh, rapper. His name was like Little Half Dead or something. I think he was with somebody oh, like Snoop Dogg. Dog. Snoop Dogg. Little Snoop Half Dead then, was with Snoop and Dog Pound. I think he's part of the DPG. I think I, I'm thinking he's close to him like that. He's he affiliated. Would he have been like a kid back then? I think I so. I'm pretty sure, okay. especially at the Death Row era, he's still like young, like what okay. Snoop was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so it was all of us there, and I kind of like caught her, like, um, 
we, me and her kind of got put together before, like you had to actually go out and get live on the radio stuff. So we were just waiting in the like hall together for like a fit, good 15 minutes. And uh, we just started talking and it's just so sad. I mean, she was so um, really, really laid back, humble, quiet, chill. She had just went through that mess with R. Kelly with the wedding that wow. was annulled and shit. And her mom was there telling my mom like some shit like, um, we don't let her talk to him anymore. And uh, my uh, mom's, yeah, like it just, it's surreal. Right. And, uh, and, and, and I just remember her being very, very, a lot more mature for her age than I was. So you could tell she had lived. Right. And definitely they bring it up on the, that hip hop treasures that you're talking about, Prince. The third episode is DMX and they go find the car. Uh, yeah, yeah. They go, they go, they go back find to the real happened? car. Yeah, they what went happened? back. What what happened was they went back to try to get they're trying to get artifacts like like they did with the Coolio and the Ice T episode they're trying to get iconic moments you know what I'm saying from from their past you know what I'm saying that was truly you know iconic you know for for every era you know what I'm saying and and they went to DMX to go you know they went and they hooked up with um I forgot what his name is I think it was but they went looking oh, for DMX he was one of the, one of the head honchos from he's one of the top, I think CEOs of um. Um, Rough Riders, Rough Riders, and they went to somebody who was close to him who actually had the Aaliyah car, <laughs> you know what I mean, and wherever they was at, but you know what I'm saying, and they had the Book of Rhymes that DMX did his early music on and whenever he, you know, when he was in prison, so, <laughs> man, <laughs> so, Oh. And they grabbed it, and they said they found out that they could get the Aaliyah car <laughs> because because uh, Cypher Sounds was trying to go get. He was trying to get it, you know, convince him, but he didn't know. So he was like, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and bring him to L Cool J. Yeah. L Cool J. Tell him like, yo, man, yo, we need this car for the you know the museum because they're working on the museum, and that's what he's talking about. He's talking about the Aaliyah car that was actually in the magazine of DMX. You know what I'm saying? That's DMX's little writer. And in the music oh, video, yeah. Spray painted, yeah. That's crazy. The next question I got for yeah. you. I read okay. somewhere I read somewhere that you're making a documentary on your life. I think I said I wanna do a documentary oh. for Hype Magazine and the interview for Hype Magazine. Um I think I mentioned that that is something that I wanna do, that um God willing that I um uh, I will do, you know. Um uh, I'm right. kind of talking. I'm talking with people about how to get that done, um, but so, it, it's not. It's not that easy. <laughs> right? No, nah, it's not that easy, especially with documentaries. I got a friend. I got a friend who does does documentaries. Like he, he even says himself, like this ain't easy. You know what I mean? Because he did one with um, I think Muhammad Ali. Shout out to Mister Ron. <laughs> Like he's a huge hip hop fan too. Like he's gonna go crazy because now nah, I just shouted him out. He he loves hip hop. Yeah, so. It's what? it's crazy because I want to get hold on I want to get to this though right yeah get this is that Cali one. this is Cali right oh uh, yeah the Scarlet Challenge yeah. how was it because yeah. a lot of people I don't know if you know but a lot of people didn't know it all it all happened with an idea on a comment right that I was looking at Snoop Dogg's um this is Cali OG mix you know it's a G mix right. And I was yeah. like, yo, why won't they just do one for every region? You know what I'm saying? For every city. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is Cali. This is K KC, which I was trying to get people for KC, but nobody didn't listen. Or uh, maybe they did or, or whatever. But I seen a lot of people from Philly and I seen people for Cal all types of places. But once I seen yours, I seen yours on Hip Hop Trans. Shout out to Rockstar uh, because I'd be on Hip Hop Trans with him sometimes. And word. I seen it. And I was like, yo, I see this girl spitting. I'm like, yo, this is hard, right? Yeah. So I was like, you know what? I want to I, I wanna do an interview with her because it feels like, you know, giving you your roses because I seen that Scarlet picked, you know what I'm saying? You know, the, the um, you know, tremendous rapper too because I seen, yeah. you know, shout out to Freeway. Freeway was in the video. Oh, and, Freeway. And I'm, I'm very, you know, kind of cool with him. You know what I'm saying? So, um. How was it, you know, doing your side of This Is Cali? Because that was like the first This Is Cali, 
You know what right. I'm saying? Besides, you know, Snoop. So how how was right. it, you know, doing that and doing the shooting the video for that? Yeah, so I actually had did the This Is Cali before the challenge had even started. Mm, um, that's yeah. hard. That's so, hard. Yeah, if, even when, so Snoop released his first, but I had actually done mine. I don't Ooh. know when you, yeah, like uh, at, around that same time. Um, and it was actually Mark. my uh, my god brother from, uh, from Brooklyn uh, told me to do it. He he hit me up and he's like, "Yo, you need to do a Cali version of that joint. This is New York. I hadn't really heard it that much, so I pulled it up and I was like, okay, let's do it.' And so um, I did it and uh, I hadn't put it out. And then Snoop came out with it, you know. And then uh, and then uh, I don't know what happened, but oh, I I, I went and did I, I went and did the video." But it was taking a while. And then I remember like Ice text me and he was like, uh, Snoop just did one. You I always talk. Listen, I oh <laughs> with him for some reason, I always do his voice in text because when mm -hmm. I read the text, he has such a strong presence. Right. So forgive me. But it, you know, if 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 you know, if I had I, I hear him when I read it, he's like, I think you better hop on this. Snoop just put his out, get yours out. And I'm like, oh no, I'm on it, OG, I'm on it. And um, and uh, we we dropped that video and shit. But the video, it was fun. I wanted more people to come out. But what I noticed with videos, a lot of people cap say they're gonna pull up and they don't mm -hmm. fucking pull up. Yeah, you never, know? never. You always. noticed that shit? Oh <laughs> my god, I used to hate that shit. I had and a I cousin. I had a cousin who, do, who, who rap. I got a cousin who rap, so I totally understand. We were like, yo, get, people get in the fucking video, like, represent your fucking hood, like, represent yo, you supposed to represent us. We ain't supposed to be a uh, few niggas in a motherfucking video. It's supposed to be the whole hood. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Word, you know what I'm saying? But, like, the end, so it wasn't even a challenge. When I heard the song, I was just inspired for this with the song, because I was like, okay, you rep your shit, let me rep my shit, too. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You know, because all right, we okay, yeah. Don't don't fuck around with New York. Get fuck out of New York. Okay, yeah, but uh, nigga, I'm from Oakland slash LA, nigga. Y'all can get the fuck out of here too. You feel me? Hey. Like so, people look at it as like an answer, and it really wasn't an answer. I love New York, but at the same time, you know, you rep your shit. I'm a rep mine. You know what I'm saying? Right, so, and and it's clever, but but it's so clever because like you did it. When you dropped that video, you did it at the right time, right after the Scarlet Challenge, like right, right before you word. know she she dropped it. Because I was I was shocked because when I seen it, I just I just looked at the likes. I was like, oh okay, that's dope. Like I don't know if she's gonna do it, but that's how real Scarlet is. Cause Scarlet grabbed that comment and said, you know what? Let's do a fucking a Scar yeah. you know what I'm saying? Let's do a let's do a challenge. Like for real. It. Like she grabbed that up and said that and ran with it. Like she gave like what was like five bands to somebody. Like for real. Like I was like, yo, all over a comment. And the crazy thing is looking at the stars that was saying it, like Swiss Beats and um and, and Buster. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Agreeing, like, yo, that's a fucking comment. And then you saying that Ice T told you to be like, yo. Think you need to go ahead and do that. That was a perfect time because you seen people grab that <laughs> and exactly. they still rocking with it. I fuck with that that version too. I, I really fuck with that shit. Like I like that this is Kelly because you showing your side of, of this is Kelly. Yeah, word, word, you know, uh that shit that shit was just crazy because I don't know. I'm surprised that no other no, no other girl, nobody really touched it, you know, as big and yeah. vast as Sally is. Nobody else really touched it and fucked with it. So, you know, the, I'm glad I did it. I, I, you did your shit. This is coming from a person that that made that Scarlet challenge. Like you, you did your shit. You know what I'm saying? And I tell it's everybody's challenge because when everybody who liked it and and they had involvement of it that was them you know what i'm saying not just me just them as a whole to, you know what i'm saying and all of us all of us you know what i'm saying because when you know music that's what you're supposed to do you know what i mean you're supposed to push people like you it's supposed to push people to create an idea so we can keep the cultural you know the culture forward going forward you know what i mean so 
Oh, it's got to. And my bad. Hey, my bad, Ryan. Go ahead. <laughs> I know I can talk. Hey, Ryan, what's what's, what's crack, happening? Ryan? What's cracking it, bro? Yeah, well, no, no, you put me on the spot and shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we try having fun, bro. We have a fun, No, I man. know. I know. I know. I, I get it. I get it. You, uh, it's all good. The, uh, I wanted to know <laughs> what, your, what your personal highlight of your career is so far. Like, what is the moment that you look back on the most and think this, this is the favorite moment? Oh. I think probably performing at a uh, summer jam, the K Day summer jam when um when uh it was you know of course so long ago, but I think that was my favorite moment. That was my first time performing in front of you know tens of thousands of people, and just the moment of um if, of just being given the mic. Just coming from sitting in your living room writing raps, you know, in a little apartment with your mom, and then you know now you you got this mic and you're rapping in front of tens of thousands of people, and they're like showing you love and shit. That that was fucking crazy, and I'll never forget that day because that was the day that I met Easy E um, a little bit before he passed. Um, Scarface was there, you know, when they do these summer jams. Yeah. Pac was there. Mm. Uh, I remember Tupac running around and shit, and it's just like so fucking surreal, man. Like being backstage with all of these people, man, and some of them are gone. And just uh, what about feeling? Like, I don't know. It's amazing. What about a dream venue? That stage? Oh, it probably would be Madison Square Garden because the, that's just the the fucking place. Like the you can rock. Huh? It's like the mecca of hip hop, you know what I'm saying? It's mecca. Yeah. Of it. It's uh celebrity, you know what I'm saying? Anybody, celebrity, how anything, you know what I'm saying? You always want to go to Madison Square Garden. No lie. Yeah, I, I know, I know. That's like a probably a typical answer, but that shit is so real. Like it would have to be Madison Square Garden, man. That shit is fucking lit. I mean, I would love, I think I've kind of I've done like some of the spots and stuff out here, but the Madison Square Garden, which is crazy. Can, can you tell us about your song, Pop Goes the Nine? No, let me bust it. Hitting fools up like a bat, throwing many balls. Crazy Matt still lyrically fat. Too many fools Oh my God. Yeah, that was my first single on a and Records that never really got to came out, come out. It's just been all over the gram. I'm um, not the gram, all over YouTube and shit. Um, so a lot of people have heard it. Uh, so that was my first single um, that we picked off after I made my album on a and um, we got a dope video for it that never came out that I just got transferred to a uh, digital format and uh, Ice was asking for it. Uh, and I just sent, I just emailed it to him like a few weeks ago. So I think he's going to like post it or put it out and you guys will be able to see it for the first time. Um, which the video's freaking crazy. I think it's um, it's like a take. Is it on Reservoir Dogs? Ice wrote the 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 script for it, but it's like like mm. a little mini. It's like it's a concept video, basically. Mm. Is what I'm gonna say. But um, yeah, the song is like you know, like just classic me. I don't know if you guys have heard it, but it's just like some hardcore shit. And uh, and then we threw ice on the sample. Pop 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 goes the nine. Don't you hear it? Yeah. Don't ever drop pop 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 goes the nine. And then the story is I had to do a reggae version of the hook because A and M um, didn't let. They thought the hook was too controversial, so oh. I had to kind of like water it down. So the the um, I think the actual version on the video is not. It's not even the the like the real hardcore one. It's the one with the reggae hook. So okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's the, that's the one I think I heard. Yeah, see, that's that shit. I, I I don't even halfway remember that, but I do remember I had to use that for the video because the record label kicked back the real version yeah. of the of the song, which is oh. the hardcore one where Ice is saying "pop pop pop" goes the nine. Mm, you know. Right. Am I wrong? Or did I, 
did Ice T put out a? Am I wrong or did Ice T just put out an album within the last day or two? I think he. I don't know. Is it his album? I think it might be his rock album, isn't it? I think. I saw him. I thought I saw him post something, but I be drinking. So. uh, Oh wait a minute! No, I be drinking too. Wait a minute. Me too. (laughs) That's so funny. The Legend of Ice-T Crime Stories, all the story raps from my eight albums plus five unreleased tracks. Mm. Collector's triple vinyl release. Okay, that's dope. So it's the crime. I thought he did it like a rock album. Like I think it was last year or this year. I the Body Count that. album? Yeah, I think, it, I think it was about another Body Count hey, album. I think. One more one more thing we got to throw in, too. They got a new one. They, they got a new one they just finished, but I don't think it's out yet. Oh, it's not out? Ooh, that's going to yeah. be dope. I like when he gets his rock bag. Yeah. <laughs> the, one one thing What's we got to bring up, too, also a couple What's Oakland that? people we know. Um, yeah. There's an Oakland guy, Eddie Project. You know that yeah. name? Do you know that name? Eddie, Eddie what, Project? Eddie Project? Yeah, Eddie. Like Eddie. Oh, no. Eddie not Project. Sure. Nope. I'm not a sure. Fo- a football player named Dante Marsh? I think nope. I know that one. Yes. Okay. I'm bad with names, though. And of course, <laughs> and of course, Seagram and Octavius Miller. Yes, I know the, the last name. Octavius uh, you, and you, Marsh. You know... Uh, you, you know, Mr. Octavius. <laughs> I, I don't think I know. I don't know these people, but you know, know these people. Where, but you heard of them. You heard of them because you know you're from Oakland and shot yeah. an RPC because uh, Seagram was um, signed to um, rap a lot. He was the I think he was like the first Bay rapper on rap a lot. Yeah. Was he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And had and had a huge one of the huge parts of um, can't be stopped with Ghetto Boys. <laughs> What? Yeah, yeah, what? yeah, and that's Octavia's brother. So whenever he asked you that, you know what I'm saying, because Octavius did a lot of work, you know, with the scene, like with Too Short and and um, Seagram and a lot of people from the back. You know what I'm saying, and especially even with um, R.P. Tobin, because Tobin was signed to um, No Limit, which you know brung um, court. You know what I'm saying, brung court. So, you know what I'm saying? So he pushed a lot of stuff in in that early scene. So that's why we asked you, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, and that's your hometown. And, and we got so many people. Do you know um, DJ Pizzo? Not sure. I don't think so. You probably, you probably don't. He was and one I'm, of the... Um, I'm looking up these people. Oh. To try to see if I remember. I'm looking. Yeah. You know, coming from Oakland, we, you know, yeah, not everybody's going to know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I I used to do that same way with Kansas City artists. Oh, like, it, took a, it took me a long time that to know time that I... we had, we yeah. had like our own rappers, you know what I'm saying? Like, I had to look at like, um, Court, <laughs> Court, Court, it was always, because I always knew, knew about Tech Nine, right? But yeah. it'd be oh. Court, yeah. Like I knew Court because Court had two, two. He had two, two guns. <laughs> and his, and his, yeah, he had the two guns. <laughs> and then I remember my my cousin. He works with my cousin. You know, shout out to S D B. And and also, you know, what I'm saying the popper. You know, shout out to the popper because he's from where where we all from. So and I remember in Velvet Cardi and all them. But I didn't know we actually had like a whole click of rappers. So I kinda Word. understand. <laughs> you know what I mean? so back to what you're saying there. It's like every time I go to this I go to the States and I say I'm from Vancouver, they're like, oh do you know this person? It's like there's a chance I don't, but yeah. Like you can't just put it all on one. Also, right. Prince, we're over the one hour, so we need to start wrapping this shit up. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no. Hey, it's all love. All love, man. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. No, definitely. Definitely. Roses. I'm just saying to keep it on Instagram. If we're ever going to put it on oh, Instagram, yeah. it's got to be under an hour. Got to. So, we have too much so if, if there's pretty much what I want to offer you the floor, if there's anything you want to talk about, I had one more question for you, and it was all just the. Right. Uh, Current state of hip hop, more and more women are being involved in it. What, what's yeah. the uh, your thoughts on that? I think it's great that more and more women are, are being involved in it. Um, 
of yeah, because when I came up, it wasn't so many of us. You know, it was a few, but it wasn't so many, and you kind of had to fit into like a certain type of image to kind of be accepted. Like you know, look, and so now women can be like more. I don't want to say feminine because they're still talking a lot of like. Ra raunchy shit uh, if the, you yeah. consider that feminine I don't know but um, you know they're able to uh, bask in their at least on the outside their femininity right and so it wasn't so much like that but now I do kind of um, think that it's a uh, it's just watered down and manufactured and shit now man and the girls some of them are just doing too much like it's it's less art and it's just more like oh you know holy yeah. shit just like man like stereotypical fuck. shit like, where's the separation at you know and 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 i don't i'm not you know a bad looking woman and and i've um done some uh some upgrades on my uh physical and shit right but that's well, not you like look beautiful <laughs> you look beautiful yes. man yeah thank yeah. you but but I'm not really selling that shit because I can really rap. Rap, that's right. Just, that's just accidentally there. You know what I'm saying? So, but I feel pressure. Like, damn, like, fuck. Like, am I gonna have to fucking put on a bikini and do this shit because all these bitches are naked? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. What you think? But, 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 but what you think? This is the huh? thing, though. So what you think that hip-hop really needs at this point right now, because especially from a female perspective, because everybody knows it's a female right now, that, you know, a lot of people are saying this, too. So they're saying the same thing that you're saying, because I got ears, because I, I be all over the place. So what you think that hip-hop needs from a female rapper right now? just like authentic just be just like how i am just be like Put authentic and just like huh yeah i mean and i and i'm and I, believe me i'm no square you know like i said you know i'm from oakland i, I have family members i'm not going to say names that you know are, are with the the ism and all that shit so i'm not gonna i'm not knocking nobody's hustle you know what i'm saying but it's right. just like fuck like can we just get back to like making like real music and not some shit just so directed at um, being like commercial and shit. I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure how to word this it's, shit. It's, like, it's kind of like, it's it's kinda like balance. It, it really needs uh -huh. balance. It's, it's kind of like balance, right? You know what I'm saying? Remember when that like early, you know what I'm saying, Cali days, like where everybody just thought about this gangster shit and then you come with like Tone Low and then you come with Coolio that give you a little balance of, okay, yeah, we could get in some gangster shit, but we could tell you another side of Cali, you know what I'm saying? That just like anything else, I think it needs balance, you know it what need, I mean? It needs, it needs less, it needs less sex symbols that think they can rap and more Lady of Rages and Okay. And, and and, and, and and people like you, you know, Grifter. Yeah. We need Grifters, the Yo Yos, yes. you know, the Queen Latifas, you know Don't what I'm saying? Fine. The Moni Loves, you know? And and, and and this is another thing before we go, because um we wanna know what's next for Grif you know, for Grifster, man. Like okay, well, what, what's know. next on the plate, man? Like the new album, like what what's up? Yeah, man, I'm working on this album, man. Um, trying to get uh, more songs done so we can listen through and pick the best ones. I'm gonna be releasing another single. I'm just gonna be dropping singles and just dropping more heat. You know what I'm saying? Till I um complete the album and find a situation uh for myself that I want to go with as far as um getting it. You know, kind of the distribution is there now, but getting some money, more money behind me, like, you know, to promote it and stuff like that. So I'm just um, doing a lot of recording, going to be releasing singles and, um, and doing features. I'm working on some features for people and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be doing like um, some little guest spots and a, a couple uh like uh, films and stuff that some people I know are doing. So just kind of getting back into this shit, you know? So you'll see a lot more of me, though, for sure. Perfect. That's what we want to hear.